Welcome to the Real Life Weight Loss Podcast, where we cut through the confusion and get down to the truth about what really works for real people when it comes to losing weight, having incredible health, and a body that you love. We believe that losing weight is really about gaining life, doing things you never thought you could, having renewed confidence, and enjoying your body more than ever. I'm your host, Corey Little. Now let's get to it. Hello, my friends. Welcome back. This is episode number 251, and today I'm going to explain to you a mindset that we slip into, so many of us slip into, and it just cripples us. It cripples us, and maybe worst of all, we start to take it on as an identity, and we just start to believe we don't have what it takes, and we can't be successful. And this episode is in direct response to my previous episode. So I recorded episode number 250 in a bit of a frenzy. We had just had some family friends pass away and other people experiencing major medical issues. And I stand by what I said in that episode, that many of us are constantly delaying happiness, contentment, and joy by falling for this, I will win lie. I will be happy when I lose this weight. Whatever. I will win lie. It's a lie. But here's the thing. I think there needs to be some clarification. After listening to the last episode, I was concerned. It was a little like, oh, just eat, drink, and be merry because we're not promised tomorrow and we could die at any moment. So screw exercise and screw trying to stay healthy because it just doesn't matter. Bring on the cheesecake. I'm having dessert every night, and I'm only going to do the things I love. Matter of fact, I just called my job and told them I quit. Woohoo! Thank you, Corey. (laughs) This is going to be amazing. I'll be fat and unemployed, but hey, at least I'll be happy. I know, I know, that's, that's a bit extreme, and I'm sure that no one, or hopefully maybe very few people, perceived that episode that way. But I wanted to circle back around in this episode and kind of do a part two, if you will, because I believe... There are some really, really important distinctions that need to be made. And this is yet one more great opportunity to highlight the undeniable, incredibly powerful role of balance in our lives. That's what this episode is all about. Now, please don't misunderstand what I've shared thus far. Let me make this very clear. I believe this episode has the power to completely shift your mindset and change your life. So I hope you'll carve out the next 15 or 20 minutes to really listen and really pay attention. Also, at the end of this episode, I have a little update for any of you who are consistent listeners. I have a little update on what I mentioned, I don't know, four or five episodes ago about should we run ads? Should we start to run ads on this podcast or should we do a real life weight loss plus like little monthly membership for nine or 10 bucks? I have an update on that, but that's coming at the end. Okay, so that's a teaser. You got to listen. You got to pay attention. All right. All right. Here we go. Like I said, last week we talked about how we can get into the habit and mindset of basically constantly delaying our enjoyment. But really, as much as delaying, what I was explaining is our tendency to make our happiness and enjoyment of life conditional. This is perfectly exemplified in the statement, in the lie that I discussed. I will win. So to be clear, it's not just that we're delaying our enjoyment or happiness. What's really happening here? is that we're not allowing ourselves to enjoy whatever it is, our body, our food, our life, until we achieve a certain thing. I will allow myself to enjoy and to celebrate when, and that's the conditional phrase, right? Once I, X, Y, Z. When I accomplish X, Y, Z. Now, like I said earlier, I stand by what I said in that episode. Ingraining this kind of mindset is a problem in so many ways. Number one, it steals your joy of the moment. Number two, it keeps you from celebrating the small wins along the journey, which makes you much less likely to actually accomplish whatever it is you want to do. Number three, it traps you in a perpetual state of pursuit where you're just always chasing the next thing. That's why I refer to it in the last episode as a treadmill. It's like we're stuck on this treadmill. But maybe worst of all, It can become such an ingrained habit and pattern that it kind of cripples your ability to experience true happiness and joy. You essentially lose the ability to just enjoy and feel positive emotions. But that is not the mindset that cripples us that I'm talking about today, okay? So hang with me. So this obviously means that we should just eat and drink and be merry, right? Everything I just described. No, no, no. 
But this is a prime example of what our society and culture so often does. We're faced with one truth or teaching or revelation that really smacks us in the face. So what do we do? We totally swing to the opposite end of the spectrum. We have an incredibly hard time finding the middle ground. But the majority of the time, the middle is where the true wisdom is. The middle is often where the answers are to our most difficult circumstances. And I can almost guarantee the middle is also where you will find the life you really want. Okay, Corey, enough about this mysterious magical middle or whatever whatever it is. How does this relate to helping me enjoy life and lose some weight in the process? Well, first of all, let's begin thinking of what I described in the last episode, I Will Win, as an overall mindset that we adopt. It's not just about delaying something in one moment. It's just, it's an overall mindset and attitude that we adopt. And here's what's so important. Don't miss this. If you're a note taker, get ready, write this down. It steals us of our joy and happiness, even if we're doing or eating things that would bring us, that we think would bring us that joy or happiness. It's ruined because we're drenched in regret and possibly even shame. Why? Because we haven't met the condition. I will allow myself to enjoy dessert, and here comes the condition, when I've lost this weight. I will not be ashamed of my body and how it looks when I can fit back in a size 10 or 6 or 2 or whatever. Now, here's what's so important to understand. This conditional mindset that delays our enjoyment of the moment doesn't necessarily keep us from doing or eating the things that we would normally enjoy. It just steals our enjoyment and makes our pleasure in that moment feel bad and wrong and shameful. It's, it's the reason that people nonstop say at various social functions, if they feel bad about their body or feel bad about themselves and they're eating some food, they'll say, oh, I shouldn't be eating this. Oh, I shouldn't be eating that. That is this mindset bubbling to the surface. We feel bad and wrong and shameful while we're eating a food that we should just be basking in and enjoying. It's kind of like asking for water to drink and then someone brings you clear distilled vinegar. Now, water is clear and basically tasteless and can be very refreshing, right? Vinegar looks the same, but it is not tasteless or refreshing. Imagine drinking vinegar as your beverage with your favorite meal. You have to take a sip every few bites, and then you have to finish the entire glass of vinegar by the time you finish your meal. Disgusting, right? I mean, it would probably make your delicious meal nearly unenjoyable. Aha! (laughs) And there we have it. This conditional I will win mindset steals your enjoyment. It makes your food, it makes your moment unenjoyable. But it doesn't stop you from doing it. It doesn't stop you from eating the things that would normally bring that joy or happiness. It's a lose-lose situation. This is why I always say that you can't shame yourself to results. And if you do, it will probably be a miserable experience that you wind up resenting. And here's a really crappy, really sneaky part. Because you don't actively allow yourself to enjoy the food or the rest or whatever in that moment, then you often will just want more. The conditional I will win mindset does not lead to the results you want, and it certainly doesn't lead to a life that you want. And it's time for the but Corey portion of this podcast. But Corey, dude, what am I supposed to do? I'm not supposed to delay my enjoyment, but I'm also not supposed to just eat, drink, and be merry, which, according to you, isn't even really possible because of this whole mental habit of conditional enjoyment. So what in the world am I supposed to do? Well, this is a huge question (laughs) and a big part of what we work on with mindset inside my Inner Circle Coaching Group. It's a big combination taking your power back, no longer forcing yourself to do or not do certain things, fully embracing your power of choice, and coaching yourself through daily decisions with this new mindset. It's powerful, and it leads to amazing results and so much more true enjoyment of life. Now, all of that is way too much to get into here, but I just want to jump to a similar but slightly different concept. We've been talking about delaying our enjoyment and having conditional enjoyment, so I want to jump right now to delayed gratification. Now, this may seem on the surface like the same thing as what I've previously discussed. But trust me, it's totally different. 
When understood and used properly, delayed gratification is a skill that can and will help you achieve almost anything you want in life. As a matter of fact, I'd say it's probably more like a requirement. So what, what are we talking about with delayed gratification? Well, here's the definition. It's the act of resisting an impulse to take an immediately available reward in the hope with the plan of obtaining a more valued reward in the future. It's all about choosing the future we want over what we want right now in this moment. If you want to lose weight, to change your body and be healthier, at some point it comes down to delayed gratification. Now you may be screaming, Corey, you are such a freaking hypocrite. This is exactly the opposite of what you just taught about delaying happiness. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, it's not. Hang with me and I'll explain. There is nothing conditional about delayed gratification. You are choosing. That's an important word. You are choosing the future, the life you want over what is tempting you right here, right now. And here's the thing. Because you are exerting discipline and taking this action, it can and will actually free you up to experience more true enjoyment. It's almost like focused, delayed gratification gives you permission to begin to let go of the other conditional mindset. You can move from, I will be happy when I lose this weight, to I will choose to be happy and celebrate now because I'm taking targeted steps to lose weight. And this, this opens the door for you to celebrate your small wins, to build confidence and actually enjoy the process. We practice targeted self-control in pursuit of something we really want. And this begins to chip away at that other poisonous mindset of conditional delayed happiness. Self-control might be one of the most powerful, most overlooked, most undervalued skills, especially in this day and age of just go with the flow and you do you and just do whatever you want to do and be happy. That's the problem. It's so hard to be truly happy if we're just constantly giving into our whims and impulses. It's like eating delicious cake that's drenched in vinegar. Yet we keep doing it because we don't know any other way. Chasing short-term happiness and pleasure rarely leads to a long-term fulfillment. It rarely leads to true happiness in the life we want. To get what we really want from life, sometimes it's necessary to choose against our short-term emotions and what we crave, desire, and so want to have in that moment. My friends, that is self-control. The problem is some of us adults still haven't quite learned the skill of self-control, have we? We're not real good at delaying gratification. We lack self-control and it causes problems. We say things we wish we could take back. We do things we wish we hadn't done. We eat things that we regret eating. We buy things that aren't necessary and they never get used. And then we end up at a place in life that we're not really happy about. And we wonder, what happened? How did I get here? Now, there could be a hundred different reasons that we do all of these things, but I think one of the biggest reasons is purely just a lack of self-control, an inability to control ourselves and to delay our gratification. But here's the thing. It doesn't stop with that. There are deeper issues here. First is exactly what we've been discussing through the last episode and the first part of this one. We're trapped in this mindset of conditional happiness. I can't and won't allow myself to be happy or truly enjoy this food or rest or whatever until I lose this weight. But that doesn't keep us from eating the food, yet we don't enjoy it. So deep down, we just want more. And our goal, lose this weight, it can sometimes just seem so far off, right? It's so far off and so unachievable that we begin to think, what's the point? And then we'll try to just drown our negative emotions, <gasps> yep, in a bunch of food that we really don't enjoy. Because once again, we're stuck in that mindset. We're basically, we're not worthy of enjoyment until we achieve something, until we achieve that thing. And the terrible cycle just rolls on and on and on. This is exactly what some people do with working out. That's the short, that's the miniature version. I don't deserve that dessert. I can't eat certain foods unless I've worked out today. That's the condition for some people. They can't eat and enjoy things unless they've worked out. Like I said, it's just a miniature version 
of the same thing, the delayed conditional enjoyment. Now, that's great. People may go, what's wrong with that, Corey? I'm just trying to balance things out. You talk about balance. That's great. Until you get injured. Then what? (laughs) No more dessert? No more food you enjoy until you get back to those grueling workouts? Sounds pretty terrible to me. It also sounds pretty mentally unhealthy. I hope that's not you. I don't mean this as a shot against you. But there's a better way, okay? There's a better way, I promise. So let's move forward. Let's keep going here. The second deeper issue behind a lack of self-control is we start to become a person who expects to fail. A person who believes they have no self-control and is just waiting for the other shoe to drop, knowing they'll eventually give up and quit because that's, that's just what I do. And for some of you, you might be like, holy crap, that's me. He just described me perfectly. And here's the problem. I'm so sorry, but hang with me. Here's the problem. This junk is self-perpetuating. The more we do it, the more we expect to do it. Being a quitter who has no self-control just becomes our identity. Over time, we have less and less self-control and less and less of what we truly want from life. See, every time we lack self-control or discipline in the moment, There is a disparity. There's a big gap between what we truly want and what we did in that moment. And it chips away at how you view yourself. It's like we're constantly lying to ourselves. We say we want one thing, and then we do something else. And this chips away at your self-image. And before you know it, you begin to think certain things about yourself. And then you begin to believe certain things about yourself. And then you take on this identity That is absolutely crippling. You begin to view yourself as someone who doesn't have self-control and doesn't have what it takes to be successful. So you'll just be forced to take whatever life gives you because you don't have the power to change things. You don't have the power or the ability to carve out your own life, the life you really want. You've proven it. You've proven it to yourself again and again that you don't have what it takes. And once you start thinking and believing these things about yourself, well, (laughs) why wouldn't you just indulge and try to enjoy the moment, right? Why wouldn't you seek immediate gratification? Because it makes no sense to delay gratification. I mean, who are we joking, right? Why delay it? For what? Because you no longer believe that the thing you want is even possible or attainable. You can't achieve it, so why even try right here, right now? But, as we've already discussed, you're eating cake that's drenched in vinegar because there's a really good chance that the bully in your brain, that little negative voice in your head, has got you stuck in delayed conditional happiness. And this steals your enjoyment of that instant gratification. It's like a lie wrapped in a promise. The food says, I will taste good. I will make you feel better. Just eat me right now. Eat me in this moment. I will make you feel better and I taste so good. And this is one of the biggest reasons it's so hard to stick to a diet and to follow through and to lose weight, right? The mental talk might go kind of like this. Eating this fast food and these cookies will taste so good and I'll really enjoy it. It will be great and not eating it, well, it really won't make a difference because I'll never achieve what I want anyway. So why in the world shouldn't I eat this? Bring it on. Now, you may not consciously think this, but I'm willing to bet that this thought process is working behind the scenes the majority of the time When you give in, when you give up, when you don't stick to your diet or make food choices that you regret. Okay, we've covered a whole lot, (laughs) and I hope it makes sense or makes some sort of sense. But let me bring it all together and try to wrap things up with something helpful and encouraging. The life that we really want doesn't come from delaying our enjoyment and then promising ourselves that we we can have permission to be happy once we achieve something. No, no, no. That's not a life I want to live. And I can almost guarantee it's not a life you want to live. Because then we're trapped in this state of perpetual pursuit. The life that we really want does come from embracing your... The life that we really want does come from embracing your power of choice and letting go of the I will win mentality. And a big part of this is delaying gratification. Choosing the life that we really want over what we want in this moment. And when we do that, it empowers us. 
It opens the door to escape the conditional happiness mindset. There's nothing conditional about choosing self-control in a moment. It's how you honor yourself. It's how you stay in integrity with yourself, build belief, and move toward the life you really want. The more we do this, the more mental muscle we build, the more self-control we have, the more we believe in ourselves, and ultimately the more satisfying, truly happy life we'll have. The less we do this, practicing discipline and delaying gratification, the weaker we become, the less self-control we have, the less we believe in ourselves and our ability to achieve our goals and dreams, and sadly, the less satisfying, less truly happy lives we live. And so we just jump from one momentary short pleasure to the next Short-term pleasure, short-term pleasure, one after the next, after the next, trying to fill the void of the life and the body and the health that we really want. And there's a really good chance we'll begin to either view ourselves as a person who doesn't have what it takes to be successful, or we might even sink into a victim mentality where we've totally given our power away. So, If we unfortunately find ourselves in that second category, what should we do? So look, if you're ready to escape this self-defeating cycle, I want to help. Not just like, oh, here are three steps that you might or might not do that could be kind of helpful and will sound really catchy. No, no, no. I want to really help. So right now, pause this episode and go register for my free coaching call. I'm doing a free coaching call for you guys on Thursday, August 17th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. I don't usually offer these at this time of year, but I really wanted to do something special for everyone who voted and gave me their feedback about whether we should do a real-life weight loss membership or begin to run ads on the podcast. I'm going to explain more about the feedback I got and that decision, but right now I want to tell you more about what you can expect on August 17th. This is going to be fantastic. I'm telling you. I'll share some of the most important, most helpful stuff I know about losing weight. And then this is where the magic happens. It basically just transforms into a free coaching call. I will hang around and answer all your questions, help you figure out exactly what's going on, why you might be struggling, and how to break through so that you can finally escape this vicious self-defeating cycle and get the results you want. Go to everybodyhatesdiets.com. That link is also in the, sc- in the show notes, so you can just scroll down, everybodyhatesdiets.com, register, and then actually attend. That is so important, my friends. <laughs> a lot of people are like, oh, I'll register, and then he'll just send out a replay. I-, I don't send out replays to these things. That's not the way it works. The benefit is being there, being there, interacting, saying hello, us getting to meet each other, hearing what I present, and then asking questions about what's going on with you. And look, here's the thing. Even if you're not interested in my program, that's perfectly okay. I'm sure I'm going to share more about my program, and I'll tell you more if you want to get involved with that. But even if you're not interested in that, it's okay. I would still love to help you as much as I can. The information will be relevant and helpful. Plus, I can answer all of your questions like I mentioned. Okay, my friends, that's it. We're wrapping this episode up. I hope it's been helpful. I also hope you'll share this episode with someone who might need to hear it. And I hope that I'll get to meet you and maybe that person too. Both of you come to the free live event that I'm doing on Thursday, August 17th, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Right now, go do it. Go to everybodyhatesdiets.com or just click the link in the show notes. If you like this podcast, you will love what I have coming for you on the 17th. Thank you all so much for your time today. I'm honored you spent it with me. Much love. God bless. Bye-bye.